Hi, I'm Laura. Thanks for coming to dance with me today. Today we're going to talk about a source of great anxiety for a lot of follows, and that is, what is my rhythm? Is it an eight count? Is it a rock step? Is it a triple step? Is it a step step? What is it supposed to be? So first, I'm gonna tell you the truth and this is gonna be unsatisfying. It's really subtle until it's not. It's hard to feel until you feel it. The best thing to do is just keep on dancing, keep on paying attention to what your body is feeling, paying attention to how you react to it, and see if your reactions are working well. However, I'll be going over some tips and tricks and some things to look for that might make the job a little easier. Note, a lot of these are gonna be shortcuts and half-truths. Nothing can substitute going out there and dancing, and Lindy Hop is so much bigger than this video. Remember, the main purpose of Lindy Hop is self-expression and the more specific I am about exactly what to do the less tailored it is to you and your situation and the harder it's going to be for you to be able to express yourself use this as a general guide and then go out and dance and pay attention to what's actually happening in your reality so what's my rhythm well in general Lindy Hop I think is a six count and an eight count dance and so you're gonna default to those basic rhythms and then it's the leader's job to persuade you from that that. Something that's really going to help, whether it's a six count, eight count, or a variation, is stepping on the beat. That is one of our primary goals as a dancer, is to be musical and you represent the music by stepping on that beat. Also, you and your partner are human beings with ears listening to the same song at the same time. So the more you can step on that beat at the same time, the more you'll be locked in together. So if it's not a basic rhythm, how do you tell the difference? I think for me, rhythm is a product of three things. One, the music you're dancing to. What's that beat? Two, the momentum that you're traveling through. Are you going fast? Are you going slow? How consistent can you be? And three, your shape and how well you're holding that shape and how well your hands movement connects to your body. If you combine those three things, you'll probably be able to tell what rhythm you're supposed to be doing. Then you take those techniques and you put it into a follow mindset, which is don't worry about the moves, continue through with your momentum, hold your shape, think about your rhythm, be a dancer, and try to do the most basic, most continuous, slowest, most down the liniest move. And it's the leader's job to persuade you to do something different if that's what the plan is. So if you have a choice between continuing or stopping, you continue. If you have a choice between doing a fancy move from class or doing a basic move with a name, do the basic move with a name. Yeah! Now let's apply all this stuff to our bodies. On a super foundational level, see if you can just notice your alignment. Keep your feet and your hips and your shoulders all together in that nice lendy hop posture we always talk about. Notice your weight shifts. Every time you take a step, see if you can move your entire body over that step instead of stepping but then not committing anything. See if you can add your arms to that. So as you're weight shifting, you can see if I have a lead in open position, I'm going to keep my body in between my two arms. If my arms are over to the side, probably it makes sense that my leader would like me to be over to the side as well. Now if you take that direction a step farther, if I keep on going in the same direction sideways, that's gonna turn into a triple step. So it's easy to see how it can turn into step, step, triple step, 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 triple step. And the beautiful part is in order to lead it, all the lead has to do is commit to their own steps and it should line up perfectly with the follower and our commitment to our own rhythm and steps. For clarity, I'm kind of exaggerating the stiffness, so I'm coming across as a little robotish without a leader. Remember, you are a badass human dancer. Don't be a robot. So that's the super basic mindset, phase two. To me, endpoints are kind of like a rhythmic surprise you get after committing your momentum down the line, holding your shape, and then you encounter what that endpoint might be. A rock step is a two beat, bump, bump, and it has a little bit of a sharper redirection. Wham, wham. Whereas a triple step is something you feel frequently at the end of a swing out. It has a more prolonged two beat continuing in the same direction, triple step, where eventually I come to a stop, but it takes much longer and it's much more gradual to have that feeling. 
one of the things you do as a follow is you take these very basic ideas and you apply them to a bunch of different situations that might seem really, really unrelated, but you're always trying to go back to that same stuff. Now let's apply those general gists to actual partner work. Hey everybody, this is Brooks. I'm Brooks. <laughs> so we're gonna start on that super basic level that we were talking about earlier. And we're just gonna contrast the six count basic versus this thing called the flip flop. Remembering that mindset of you just keep on going until you're stopped. So let's start with the flip flop. Try not to guess if it's the six count or the eight count. Try to always think that it's the one that continues, and then be surprised if we have a stop. And delighted. Next up, you have the six count circle versus the eight count circle. Now this is kind of an oversimplification. It can be done in many different ways, but a lot of the times the six count circle is really, really linear. So your momentum continues in one direction and the eight count circle has a zoom zoom on the five, six that causes me to turn around and kind of cross in front with my right foot. Check it out. try to guess which one it is. We're just trying to go in the same direction for the longest. So first up, send out and then six count back to close. It looks like this. you feel rhythm accurately is by continuing your momentum consistently and what happens a lot is follows have a tendency to pause between each triple step and then restart again check it out yes so you can see I don't continue through you want to pretend like you're on roller skates or you're in the current of a river you just continue to go without speeding up, slowing down, stopping, any of that. Looks like this. If you have to guess which one you're gonna do, the basic send out. Now let's talk turning and rotation. 
Again, the rhythm is a product of my commitment to my alignment and my consistent unwavering momentum. So basically, if I have a very slow rotation, triple step, triple step, just like the turns video, if you've seen that, all of my footwork needs to progress down that line. And so every triple step is a half a rotation. You'll see stuff like this in six count passes. If I have a faster rotation, bam, 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 you can see that that's a step. And if I have an even faster rotation, triple step, you can see that that goes back to a triple step again. Now all of this comes down to how quickly my hand goes around that circle and how well I can attach myself to that hand. Our next contrast, we have the six count tuck turn versus the eight count tuck turn. And this is going to involve the follows again being connected to their symmetry and their shape. So six count tuck turn, you've probably seen it. triple step as part of a continuum instead of its own thing. Let's do the six count. What I see a lot is this. Okay. Where I know I'm about to go in this direction, so rather than filling out the space and committing myself to that rotation, I just give my arm. Or I might do this option. where instead of seeing how far the space goes and trying to be present in that moment, I get to the picture of what I think that shape is supposed to be. See if you can keep yourself in touch with both of your leader's hands, if he's touching you with both hands, um, or with just whatever information you have available, and fill the space as you find it so you can get a real picture of what's happening. So if you see that again, the good tuck. Go, wham, boom. If you have to guess if it's the tuck turn or the double tuck turn, which one are you going to guess? The basic six count tuck turn. Our next contrast is pretty much exactly the same as the tuck turn contrast. We're doing six counts versus eight counts down the line. Looks like this. Want to do the six count first? Yeah. All right. how quickly my hand goes around my circumference, which is the leader's job, and how well I attach that hand to my body and how consistently I follow through with my momentum, which is my job. This last one is kind of subtle, but it builds on what we were talking about when we were doing the solo portion, which is those triple steps, bam, 
being nice and slow, going sideways. You see that in a lot of six count passes. Brooke's gonna take that, speed up that rotation, and make it a four count pass so many turns. So let's do some six count passes and then make them foam. <laughs> is that he's just taking my hand and flipping it around. And if you're in touch with this proportion and you allow your hand to flip over your entire body and you allow that to be reflected in your feet, it'll be much easier to tell the difference between triple steps and step steps. Thank you. Oh, okay, so that's a lot of technique and a lot of different things to think about. When you go out dancing, don't let all this technique distract you from being a dancer. You wanna think about it, you wanna observe your body, but primarily, you wanna to listen to that music, bounce your butt, and step on that beat with your partner. That will fix so much. So ultimately, just pick your right foot or your left foot, and if it's the wrong foot, you can correct it. And let me tell you, correcting is something that will last you your entire follow life and will never go away. The only thing that's not fixable is if we're timid about our rhythm and we fail to commit to anything because then we've taken Lindy Hop out of the rhythm dance that it was meant to be. And we've also taken ourselves out of our ability to contribute to that dance because we become tentative and afraid. Boldly commit, one foot or the other, it's fixable. And then if you have a mistake, it's a big mistake and you can see it and you can react to it. Mistakes should never be something to be afraid of. These are great learning opportunities. So if you have somebody to work on this with, I think randomized practice is the best way to go about it. Try not to just drill one thing. Try to bounce back and forth between all of these different ideas and all of these different figures because the social dance floor is really random. You're constantly getting new things thrown at you. And so drilling one thing in particular is just less realistic. If you don't have anybody to practice with, which a lot of us don't, then you have the social dance floor. So if you can go out there, notice when your leader is rotating you. Notice when you're getting a stop. Notice if you're letting your arm loose. Notice if you're letting yourself collapse so it's harder for you to feel that rotation. To follow and to dance in general is to explore and to notice your own body. So the more you can get in touch with that, the better. BT dubs, solo dancing is a great way of figuring a lot of this stuff out. But what happens if you don't have social dances? Right now, a lot of us are in quarantine. We don't have a partner and we don't have a place to go social dancing. So what I would encourage you to do is really Really get into solo dancing. Dance on your own. Do triple steps, do step steps, do classic routines. Those things are amazing for acquainting you with your body so you can get used to telling your body to do something and your body get used to saying, okay. Something else you can do and something that I did a whole lot whenever I was a newer dancer is I danced all the time with inanimate objects, solid things like doorknobs and window frames and countertops. Those feelings you get out of those inanimate objects are the same feelings that you get from a lead. The difference is you're generating the feelings instead of the lead generating the feelings. And even beyond that stuff, something that's really been helpful for me is talking to a teacher about this technique, getting a full picture of what they think about and then just letting that resonate with me so I can take that into my movement and into the social floor whenever I had an opportunity to go. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, leave something in the comments. If you wanna support my channel, click subscribe or head on over to my Patreon. And of course, the best way to learn how to dance is just to go out there and dance.